No grapevine tonight. We told you earlier in the newscast that first time applications for unemployment benefits are up, which brings us to tonight's story about how some Americans who most deserve a break are having a hard time finding one. Senior national correspondent John Roberts explains. It's a light one. After 12 years in the National Guard, Donna Bockler is still in fighting form. In fact, this one time drill sergeant would love a career as a fitness trainer. But there's a problem. It is an issue when you come into an interview and somebody sees a cane. It's the cane and an unstable ankle that she says has kept her from her dream job. But the ankle isn't her only struggle. She developed PTSD after helping collect remains from the World Trade Center attack. Neither prevented her from deploying to Kuwait, but she's been job hunting for a year, and so far, nothing but rejection. They think we all come back as sort of sort of Rambo complex, that we all have PTSD and we're all issues, and then we're all going to have health issues later on in life. But you do have PTSD, and <laughs> you do have a, a wonky ankle. Right, but I also have a strong desire to work and a strong desire to serve. That desire to work and serve is shared by Erin Lloyd. This was the day I put on a uh, third class petty officer. She was a master at arms in the Navy for five years, earned citations and awards, then went on to a degree in accounting from Rutgers. Store associate, uh, front desk manager. She moved back home six months ago and has been looking for a job ever since. I was going to go see a headhunter um, and she called me to inform me that unfortunately she was unable to do an interview um, because they didn't really work with somebody with my background. They're called the invisible veterans, women with extensive military experience the civilian world doesn't seem to value. In 2010, 12% of them were unemployed, compared to 8.6% of women in the civilian world. There wasn't a plan in place for our nation to really step up and support these women coming home. Part of the problem is a VA system that for decades was targeted to serve men. Another is that military skills aren't certified for use in civilian jobs. We spend a lot of money training very smart people and then we don't give them a tiny piece of paper that says this is what your military skill means in the civilian world. Veterans groups are trying to change that and deployed Donna Bockler and other vets to Capitol Hill to twist a few arms. We've got to tell them that these folks are not ticking time bombs. They're not the stereotype you might have in your head. They're incredibly dynamic. They're dedicated. They're exactly the people you want to hire. The VA has been making changes and now has nine programs targeted specifically to Award helping women vets prepare for civilian jobs. For the moment, Donna Bockler is working hard to improve her qualifications, earning her master's in fine arts. Erin Lloyd may go back to school for her MBA. If anything you've learned in the military, it's determination and you, you keep going. And remarkably, despite all the determination, leadership skills, and discipline learned during wartime, both are weighing whether to leave that military experience off their resumes. It's something I should be putting on a job application thinking this is a chip that's going to give me a shoe into this job as opposed to thinking about taking it off going this is the thing that's going to cause me to lose the job. A bill that's currently before Congress aims to improve the job prospects for veterans by smoothing the transition between military and civilian life. But with the ongoing reduction in troop strength, it's likely that Donna Batchelor and Aaron Lloyd are only going to have more competition for those limited jobs that are out there. And Brett, we should point out currently 15% of returning veterans are women, and that number is on the increase. Wow. John, thank you.